I think when we think about the use of the ketogenic diet for our children, I think we've got to be prepared to use it uh, much more quickly than we do. Um, and I think with a lot less fear and trepidation than I think we've shown in the past. Um, all of the studies that, that we've been doing, um, and many, many other people um, throughout the, the last uh, at least good 15 years or so, um, suggest that we really ought to be doing it once a youngster has failed two medicines. There's no question um, it is a lot simpler in anyone's life to be able to take a pill or a couple of pills in the morning and a couple of pills at night and, and, and go on about your life. Uh, but for the, the really large percentage of children that we have to deal with, and, and, and the reality is probably at least 30% of children aren't controlled by a, a medicine. Um, and no matter how many you try, um, I think we've got to be prepared to step in with the diet. But I think especially if you're looking at uh, children with a difficult epilepsy, and we can pretty much tell right, right when we first see them that I'd put the ketogenic diet or dietary therapy very high on the list, uh, second, third, or even first in some cases where you're pretty confident it's going to work. So it does vary considerably by the age of the child, the uh, type of epilepsy uh, they have. But I think it's uh, something that's uh, underutilized and should be probably higher up in the list than when we, we initiate it. In an ideal world, I think the ketogenic diet should sit alongside other anticonvulsants, particularly if one or maybe two drugs have failed. I think it should be readily available to physicians and parents who want to try it much sooner than perhaps is now considered. I accept because of limited resources, but I think many physicians still think of it as rather a last resort rather than as a uh, equal anticonvulsant to some of the others, particularly if one or maybe two drugs have failed. If we want to get a little closer to where exactly the ketogenic diet might fit in the treatment armamentarium for patients with epilepsy, I think you need to look at it from two perspectives. The first is that uh, currently, uh, most experts would say that if you fail a couple anti-epileptic drugs, the chances of you responding to the next drug are virtually nil, or very small. Uh, therefore, one could reasonably state at present uh, that ketogenic diet might be considered uh, after failure of two medications, provided, of course, that you're not a strong surgical candidate uh, and you have the appropriate mechanisms within the health institutions as well as the family, uh, families that are involved uh, to properly implement the diet. I think in the ideal world in the treatment of refractory or difficult to treat seizures in children, uh, parents and their kids need to be aware of all their possible options including medications, dietary therapy, vagus nerve stimulation as well as epilepsy surgery. And for me, I think the dietary therapy and ketogenic diet is probably the best treatment for children with difficult to treat seizures. So in my ideal world, all children would have access to it and their families would be aware of it as an option. For a child that has an appropriate seizure type to, to be on the ketogenic diet, it's probably something that should be thought about after at least second or third medicine, the discussion with the family and in a given family. Some families may want to try it sooner or some later, but the, but the idea should be approached relatively early on in the treatment. I think for any child who has failed two or three medications, they and their family need to know about the ketogenic diet. And this needs to be an option that they can make together with any of the other treatments that's available right now, like the vagus nerve stimulator or other drugs or epilepsy surgery. There should be an option that should be presented equally with these other treatments once the child becomes refractory. I think most of us would agree not to wait, make it the last resort. Um, should it be used first? Maybe. Should it be used second or third? I think certainly. Um, one thing that has become a very uh, real, very interesting uh, clinical uh, research question for most of us in the community that do a lot of the ketogenic diet um, is not even necessarily what place but for whom. And I think that's the big issue I think in the next 10 years we'll try to answer. Are there certain epilepsy conditions that the diet seems to work better for? And I think the answer at least now in 2008 is yes. Um, and in those situations, uh, infantile spasms is one tuber sclerosis, uh, myoclonic astatic epilepsy, there are several, um, maybe we should be using the diet first. I think in kids with intractable seizures, um, dietary therapy plays a very significant role. I think particularly in the children who have um, early onset um, intractable epilepsy, particularly the epileptic encephalopathies like Lennox-Gasto syndrome, um, the diet is, is a real major therapeutic option and I think needs to be moved up 
in when we consider its use. So rather than being considered even after three or four medications, it probably needs to be considered after a failure of one or at most two medications. The ketogenic diet is a really important tool that we have nowadays for, for treating children with difficult epilepsy. So it's not something that I would use first off when I first see a child who's just presented with seizures and is on no medication. But many of the children I see have already been tried on a number of different medications. So they've been on the first one and the second one. And it's around that sort of second to third drug that hasn't worked very well. That's when I'm beginning to talk about what other options do we have for treating epilepsy in children. That's when I talk about the ketogenic diet.